You know what happened? I know what happened. Somebody said, hey, it's at 6 o'clock. And um, I'm not blaming Max, but um, I forgot I put it back at 5. Or it was at 5. Anyways. So I was like, oh, good. It's at 6. I, Anyways, whatever. It's my fault. No one else's fault except mine. This song sounds like the song Shake recorded to replace Happy Birthday and Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Yeah. It's uh, my, like, Minecraft song. I make my own schedule. Yes. <laughs> no, nope, this was all me. So, um, there is this group. They are called the Phone Booth Podcast. And if you're not familiar with, it's... um. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures! Yeah, dude, radical! Except they're not very excellent. They're not very radical. <laughs> like, they are like a toxic bunch. A very hateful bunch of people. Um, because, you know, not because they're flat earthers. Because they are toxic flat earthers. They are some of the, you know, the group of flat earthers that, like the Caleb style of flat earthers. <laughs> they, they think they have to be edgy like bill and ted weren't edgy like that bill and ted were edgy like in cool dude rad dude cool yeah like they weren't like mean they they were like cool dude they were like man i just want to chill about everything these dudes are like no i like that and they don't look anything like bill and ted either or um rufus or death <laughs> it's sort of funny yeah, so, um, yeah, and I ask them, so they, they're, like, targeting me, and then my account, like, it's, every time they go after me on Twitter, my, um, account gets locked out for some mysterious reason on Twitter, um, I don't know why, but, you know, hey, it, it happens. It's part of the Matthew gang. If you're familiar with that group, I showed the group of people that went out a, a, after Hannah on um, the country girl from, um, is, that, is she from Alabama? Wherever. That, that was like, peace, dude! Or, or rock and roll! These guys think, oh, look, he's put up the sand and so I know, dude, it's rock and roll! <laughs> and they're, they're supposed to be Bill and Ted. They, they think this is like satanic. It's like Bill and Ted, dude. Bill and Ted. And you're going to, you're like thinking this is like some sign. And you're like trying to like channel Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted. And you're going after this. Like, they love you. They love free speech unless you say something they don't like. Yeah. That's about it. Anyways, I don't need this. I was on the phone earlier. It is sort of funny, like in in that regard, and uh, so like, <laughs> the, all they've done is like grow my followers on on X by like three hundred. Like, just keeps like because people aren't like don't like them, like you know the flat earthers do, but most of their followers are not flat earthers, and it's sort of funny, like. Like people hate follow, you know how they how that is, and uh, all it does is like get me more followers. It's sort of funny. 
in that regard. But um, uh, let's see. I want to, yeah, here they are. And present. And I didn't say this either, but they take it like I did. So they share this post um, trying to tag me. And, uh, oops, wrong, wrong button. It, this is Ted. So he, Ted, Theodore, Logan, and well, you'll see who these guys are. Does anyone know who this moron is? He claims he has personally killed Flat Earth and it's being back on Twitter. No, somebody was showing how these guys may be bot farming. Who cares? I don't care. Like, they, they try to do these conspiracy. Like, there's conspiracy theorists on both sides of the anti-flat earth, flat earth. They go after each other, sort of comical in in, a, in one way. <laughs> hey, Steve, 64, 64. And um, must be the sweet head hand signs and the globe eyes. So, like, Bill and Ted, Bill and Ted's going after my hand sign, my freaking radical dude, you old rock and roll god like bill and ted going after my freaking rock and roll <laughs> come on are you kidding me are you kidding me give him your best epi proof below and watch him squirm yeah i squirmed <laughs> as my follower accounts going ting, 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 ting. thank you ted thank you bill <laughs> thank you dad thank you rufus <laughs> Anyways, hey Pedro. Uh, anyways, wait, we've actually found some epi proof. Oh, it's so funny. Like, just the comments. And, and Matthew's a wonderful guy, one of these other toxic people. Yeah, they seemingly ignoring the likable aspect of Bill and Ted. Exactly. Oh my god. And they sit there and they insult my looks and stuff like that. And uh, anyways, it's going to be funny. Let's debunk their proofs. Like half the people. Oh, there's Caleb. Wonderful Caleb. All he, all he does is attack me. How dumb I look. Look dumber than those in talks to Simon and Dan. Yeah. You know, they love free speech until you say trans woman. I know. They posted a video of that too. They, they, they believe that there's Navy lasers that can target ships 100 miles out. And I asked for any evidence. And they show me like evidence of things that can target drones like one mile and five miles out and like disrupt their targeting. Like nothing that's like even close to 100 miles. It's so funny. Anyways. It's funny. Like, it's half and half. And uh, and then they do this shit, and then my account gets blocked. Like, so they target me. Anyways. Try to take down my account. Doesn't matter. But, so, they they, they share this. So, these are their four accounts. Uh, Bill S. Esquire. And they don't look anything like these four guys. You know, Rufus. But they pretend to be these four guys. But they go by the food, phone booth podcast. So this is they have a rumble, rumble, and like look at all these like followers. Like they have, you know, this guy has thirty. Oops. So th this guy has thirty one thousand, thirty three thousand, twenty seven thousand, two thousand. A F um. FST Rel Nice, welcome from Sweden. And so I go to their podcast, right? Yeah, it's a good gimmick. I'm not I'm not shaming them for the gimmick. And then you go to their podcast, and then we have 580 followers on the podcast. It's like, how do you have how do you have um tens of thousands of followers and only 500 followers on your podcast? Uh, not being able to sleep all night. That's, that's sad. I mean, it'd be a good gimmick if they actually lived up to the gimmick. Right? You know? So I'm like, 
I'm like looking for like a good show. Like this is supposed to be a, one of the good flat earth groups, right? Yeah, probably body, whatever. And so I'm like hidden history, Tataria uncovered, Isaac's army invades the phone book. Technical difficulties. New World Deceptions. Yeah, four idiots brought to humor and aren't going to execute any idea properly. Oh, yeah, it's so funny. Like, they sit there and they, like, they they try to shame me with my humor, too. Like, it's so funny. Like, and all I can do is laugh. Like, where's one of the things they posted? They show my debates and stuff like that. Some people, oh, is it this guy? Oh, yeah, these are the four of them. Oh, let me show you. So this is Brenda. Brenda, thank you, Brenda. <laughs> Anyways, this is the four of them. So they're making fun of my looks, and these are the four of them. It's like, don't give them any production advice, okay? I will. They could be better. I give them some advice. Oh, yeah, she says, oh, the hand sign might, you know, ah. And so I'm like... <laughs> Oh, where's the, uh, uh, they always want to mock my, um, uh, they make video clips of me all the time. I'm in their head now. It's sort of funny. So I do so many debates now. I can't find it. Anyway, so they make videos of me. And I just share them because I think they're funny. Like the ones, um, like the look, they always do like clips of me at the end of the debate, like the little gotcha questions and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's sort of funny to me. One of them, they took me out of context. Oh, is this the one? Oh, yeah. Oh, here it is. You, you got my email. It's on my email. But unless you're hot, then maybe, you know, hey, you're a hot trans woman. You, you got my email. It's on my YouTube channel. But... I'm not sure where I was going with that, but ask me another <laughs> question. Like, oh, no, I just want to say I take people basically at their word. If they say that they believe the, the shape of the earth, I take them at their word. But unless you're hot, then maybe. Yeah, you know. so they're all triggered by that. That's so funny. Like, thanks, dude. <laughs> I was like, I'm not ashamed of that. Why would I be ashamed of that? Where's the other one he did that? I love triggering bigots. Yeah, it's like so funny. Where's the other one? Did he post the other one? Uh, he posted another one. Uh, but they took it out of context. But it's it's funny. I, I want to show it if I can find it. Is this it? Oh, here it is. Average intelligence. IQs. I just wanted to point this out. There is an average intelligence. There's an average intelligence. And then there's Einstein. And and by golly, not everybody's an Einstein. And not everybody's average intelligence. There's people below average intelligence and people above average intelligence. So I'm an idiot. I I, I want to go to Mars. And um, that's it. I yeah, I'm an idiot. Have I used I just wanted to point this out. <laughs> like fun. <laughs> it's like cool. Like, as a, that's funny, dude. I like, that's good. I Let me share this. I like this one. Let me share that. Yeah, baby. I can definitely be an idiot. I mean, I think it's like insulting to me or something. That's a problem with it. They like can't take any humor either. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they, they have, they're so sensitive to any like accusations or like belittling or anything like that. Like they don't have like self deprecating humor. It's like, <laughs> oh, like so funny, but like, what, what do they have here? Like they have 20 video or 20, 34 videos. Like, where is there evidence for a flat Earth? Caleb? Oh, my goodness. Caleb? Yeah, fragile ecos. 
And the first ones are them all on Discord. Like, so boring. Like, I try to watch one of them. Make sure I do kinematic dynamic der derivation to prove it. Yeah. So I, I started to watch this one with Billy Zig. So he wrote a fantasy book about somebody who found lands beyond Antarctica. Because some of them believe, like, there's not, like, a magical dome. They believed, like, there's lands beyond Antarctica. So how do they know that? I have no... See, this is how lovely they are, too. Let's just flip off our audiences because, you know, we're cool. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so... There's so many There's one simple on thing that too. anyone can do to help balance their Like how do we get rid of look at this shit? Like how do I get rid of the commercials? Oh, this is so annoying, huh? I'm just gonna skip that. I so I add this back. So like He says, um, um, skepticism means like knowledge. <laughs> oh, you, ha you have no sound. Oh yeah. I muted it. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Cause I didn't want the commercials. Let me go back. And I'm not sure, but you're right. You're right. Yeah. Imagine if it was just, you know, breaking news. What you know, if it was like the, confirm the world. Yeah, like the dream in your book <laughs> where, where yeah, the, the reporters exactly. were there at the car and all that, blah, blah, blah. Like, people yeah. would go crazy. It would, it would be insane. <laughs> but it, it would. Yeah, they would, wouldn't they? You know? And, yeah, I, I wonder where that should. Look, it's been 10 years. I've, I've been, you know, I've been doing this talking about now. his book. With the original intent, just like everyone else, to debunk this ridiculous notion that the Earth is flat. You know, scientists have proven it's a globe for years. The Greeks proved it. All of the narrative that you know you see even the globe earth is that they think we don't we were in another world or something and didn't hear what they heard at school or the yeah. news and all that we we know what you're talking about <laughs> probably a little bit better than you do because oh, yeah. we we we've examined it for so long and we've done it in a, with a critical mind as well we're skeptical on and and, and that's oh. how you should pr approach um a topic with skepti with that gr the greek word skepti is th with thought and that's what some that's not what skepticism means either. Like with thought, that's not what skepticism means. Like with skeptic, this is a um, etymology fallacy. Yeah, skepticism means they don't know and don't understand if anything. He says skepticism means with thought. That's not what skepticism means. Like he's looking at the root word of skeptic and saying it means with thought. Skeptic means. Skepticism means means like you doubt, um, like if you can formulate a belief, like radical skepticism, like you sort of have doubts that you even exist. Like if like if you're talking about Greek skepticism, I like I don't know what they're saying is doubt as to the truth of something. It doesn't mean with thought. Like they don't know what skepticism means. You know, they're all just like nodding their head as if they're true. Now I get he's like a, a guest on stage there. But it doesn't mean just with thought. Like critical thinking doesn't mean you're skeptical. It means you're doubting the truth of the claim is what skepticism means. Am I skeptical of incompleteness? <laughs> um, yes. I think um, knowledge is possible. So... I'm skeptical is, but we've been taught that you know, don't be skeptical. Like, what do you mean? Don't think, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, who says not to be skeptical? I've never heard that. Like, who says not to be skeptical and not to think? 
So he's he's also conflating skepticism with critical thinking. Like you can be a critical thinker without being a radical skeptic. Like skepticism and critical thinking are different things also. Um, and cynicism is different too. So a lot of these people are actually cynics, cynics which is another form of um, uh, philosophy. So, uh, And it's fine to be a cynic about certain claims too. Um, yeah, Flatonomics 101. You know, I, I think we're going to get there. <laughs> I think I we're going to get so. there um, oh, very yeah, soon because dude. within the last 10 years, it's probably what I was going to say, is that there's been a massive um, ramp up in this ramped, ramped up, up like, hockey dude, stick. Almost, even in the right? last three years, and I think every one of us can agree to that because we've all Ooh, been yeah. doing this for quite a while, These this yeah. last three years. It's almost like the, the pandemic helped it, right? The, the pandemic. <laughs> No, you just formed your own echo chambers, dude, and you just reinforced your own beliefs just because you've all grouped together in your own echo chambers and you've enforced your own beliefs. Doesn't mean your beliefs have grown, doesn't mean it's gaining any tractions. It's mostly in the US too. Uh, when I drive off the cliff because my GPS sent me there, I'll no longer be skeptical about its accuracy. I'll bloody well know it's crap. <laughs> uh, yeah. GPS can um, lose connections, especially your vehicle. So um, all, don't totally rely upon GPS. Uh, why does it never occur to a conspiracy theorist that they're all practicing groupthink? No clue. Um, they're not skeptical of their in-group preferences. That's another problem with they, they feign skepticism, but they're not... Um, or they're actually, they feign skepticism, but they're really cynics. They're being cynical of governments and science and stuff like that. And when, like his term, pandemic, it's that cynicism, not skepticism. It's different. Um, they feign um, skepticism, but they actually um, conform to their in group preferences. And, and like you pointed out, Ashton, I think we all do that. Though we're we're sort of biased for in group preferences, so I don't necessarily blame that in that regard. It's just like uh, we should like recognize that we have those in group um, biases and try to not always try to realize that we have it when we make decisions um, for the future. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It gave us everybody time to sit down at home and just dive in. And they were just getting <laughs> the truth. They were like, oh, yeah, it's on now. And just start bombarding <laughs> the Internet with all this stuff. And people are just getting yeah. slammed with it. You know, it was like an talk, amplifier. You know, like, hey. Yeah. There you and they're not truthers either. So, like, I would say I'm a truther. I hate it when they say they're the truthers. I am the truther. I study philosophy, like which means I studied the theory of knowledge. It's what I try to do. Theory of knowledge being like trying to understand how to differentiate between what is knowledge and what is not knowledge. So what is true? What is not true? What is a rational belief? What is an irrational belief? They're not serious about how to justify beliefs and or not justify beliefs. And um, so if anything is a truther, I, I would say I am the truther um, and they're not anyways, but whatever. Flat earthers are not very good at self-reflection. Maybe a lot of them may not be. I'm not sure. Does knowledge theory differentiate what matters? Um, no, I, I think Tim Bob would probably, um, you will approach things differently, I think, about what is true or not. Um, J Jaws incarnate. Um, some of them use Chat GPT. I use it sometimes to help me look stuff up. Um, helps. The term truther has taken a hit the past twenty years. Yeah. Hey, welcome Jeff C. But I don't see any value. I I was planned to go over their phone booth because they challenged me to do so. Like their content had some real value. People challenged me to go over their content. So I've spent like the day trying to find any value with their content. And, and I can't find any value. Mr. Sir, 
I like how conspiracy theorists equate science with one group lying, telling the narrative in reality. They are the one group telling a specific narrative and science is made up of diverse peoples. Yep. But there is a consensus narrative even within science. And where does that consensus narrative come from in science? Do you know, like, Mr. Sir? Like, that is a good question, like, I have. Like, like Big Bang cosmology, where is the consensus in that? Like, we pretend like we know, like, peer review, but... Like, what's hypotheses and what's theory? Yeah. Science is consensus based, but where is the consent? Where is the consensus? Is it the authors of the like the book, the textbooks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, there's no published, like, consensus. Like, where is that? Like, I I try to find it. Like, what, in an encyclopedia, like, you know, where's the peer-reviewed consensus? Like, I don't, like, find it. I wish it was, like, a way to, like, navigate, like, papers to find where the actual consensus is in different domains of science. And it is a challenge to find it. So you find people have different views on like, what's the consensus in evolution? What's the consensus in, in cosmology? What's the consensus in this? What's the consensus in that? And I try to, you know, find it and it's hard. Like is, is, do we actually accept that dark energy and dark matter exists or do we not? Like, is there a consensus? What is the consensus about dark energy, dark matter? Do we just, is it just a placeholder? Do some people accept it exists? Um, are there other theories of cosmology that do away with it? Um, how big of a consensus is it? What theory of cosmology is the most widely accepted? You hear like T-Jump, we'll talk about like, um, um, quantum field like we emerge from quantum field quantum dark matter is not a fact is it theory is it a theory or is it a hypothesis jaws i would say dark matter is a hypothesis and a fact is a fact is something is observed so we have observed a lensing um f for dark matter so we have an observation that says there's something there that's not explained by um, matter alone. So we have an observation that's not explained by theory of relativity and expansion is unaccounted for gravity. Yeah. So is there dark matter? So it's an hypothesis, a placeholder it says, it, so it's not a theory. Now we'll call it a theory, like a name. We'll give it a label theory. But it, it's not tested, so it's not a theory in that regard because it hasn't. So this is what happens, Bob, though, is that somebody will publish a paper and they'll say theory of X, and it, but it hasn't been tested, so it's not really a theory in the sense that it's not been peer-reviewed, it hasn't been tested. But the published paper will say theory of dark matter, whatever. And, but it hasn't been tested or peer reviewed. Like, and then, so it's not, it's still technically a, an hypothesis um, until it's been proven or not proven, but tested. Like, we've done some modeling and predictions based upon it existing, right? Beyond just like some anomaly, something else that we can verify it with. And then we haven't done that, right? Like we have sort of maybe done some stuff. No, I don't think I, no, Bob, I, I don't think I've seen any paper that's called the theory of dark matter, but you'll see that like the um, CCC theory, right? The theory of cyclical conformal cosmology or whatever. They'll call it a theory or the um, holographic universe theory. They'll call it the holographic universe theory. 
or the uh, modify Newtonian dynamics theory, but it's really an hypothesis to replace um, um, Einsteinian uh, general relativity. But the title of the paper will be X, but it's really just a hypothesis to try to explain it. Yeah. And there's hundreds of published papers on dark matter. Sure. That's the problem. People read all these papers to talk about the thing, but it doesn't mean that we know the thing is true. So there's lots of confusion. Like, where is the consensus in science about all these claims? So every time I, I read, I, yeah, holographic principle. Yeah, and it's not like the idea of like holographs like we see like on TV or like the little toys we can make like a holographic projection. It's sort of like this idea that reality is like two dimensional that projects a three dimensional universe. So what we see as three dimensional is is just a projection of two D a two dimensional universe. So I think I got that right. Um, so it, it's sort of another explanation for our observations. 20, well, Joe, Jaws, this is a claim that the 26.8% of the matter in the universe is dark matter. That is a claim. We don't know if that's true. How do you know it is 27%? It's 27% if, if our observations are accurate. So our observations are 27% off when it comes to um, gravity. So it's a hypothesis that we put a placeholder there for our observations called dark matter. So we, we, have, we don't know if dark matter exists. This is the problem with science. Like what is the consensus? Is the consensus that dark matter actually exists? Is there another version of um, gravity that could explain um, our observation without appealing to dark matter? Well, Gupta says there is, um, seems to believe there is. There's um, modified Newtonian dynamics proposals that try to do away with dark matter too. Um, but none of them have gained any traction, but there, there's, there's different people within physics, serious people within um, cosmology that don't agree with that dark matter exists. It's, it's not like fringe science for people to um, believe dark matter doesn't exist. Science needs a new word for theory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the problem is they put it on a paper because they want it to be a theory. Right? So it's a proposed theory. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Science needs a new word for theory. Maybe. I don't think so. I think we just need to be better, like, way uh, we publish paper. Entertain us. I, I got a debate coming up on... Um, I, wanted, I want to review this um, circuit, too. So, uh, yeah, flaws with the current ones. I got a debate coming up against Dustin Nemos um, scheduled for May 8th on does Satan exist? And unless Dustin Nemos is Satan, which I will argue he is, Satan doesn't exist. But have you seen Dustin Nemos? Like, look at his face, like his eyes, his hair, like the shape of his face. His chin, I'll tell you, maybe Satan does exist, and he is Dustin Nemos. <laughs> yeah, proposed theory. Yeah, Einstein's paper, General Relativity, translates to the foundation of the general theory of relativity. So even he was calling it a theory before it was validated. I know. I've never seen Dustin Nemos and Satan in the same place at the same time. I'm telling you. 
Yeah, I I am going to argue that Satan doesn't exist, but if he does, who's more likely to be the Satan worshiper? The person that believes in Satan or the person who doesn't? <laughs> You're looking at a circuit for a CRT television last night. Holy hell, are they complex? They are. It's amazing they even work at all. I know. I, I studied them way back in the Navy. Like, way back. I studied oscilloscopes, even. Like, way back in the day. Yeah, Dustin's a little bit on the uh, opposite side. So, I don't think what well, I thought I was going to review the phone book po podcast, but I don't think they have any, anything worthwhile. Sorry, you guys. Um, and you need a new shtick, dude. You guys are not Bill and Ted. You don't give me Bill and Ted vibe. Like you need to be cooler. First of all, like be cooler, like radical dudes. Yeah, man. Come on. Be chill. Ugh. The one I was looking at had almost a thousand things soldered onto the board. Wow. All right. So I got these two videos. Now it shows 5 p.m. Yeah, okay. All right. So this is supposedly... Oh yeah, I have like I have allies on the flat Earth community that are young Earthers. Consensus is DM is there is what it is yet that's not been defined. Could be stable neutrinos or any new theory. How do you know if that's a consensus, Jaws? Where is that? Where is it posted that it is the consensus that dark matter exists? That's what I want to know. And where is it posted that it could be stable neutrinos or a new theory? That, that's why I want to know. Where do you find that? Where do you find that the consensus is that it what it is? Like, where, where is that at? <laughs> Anyways. So I meant to go over this. It's, it's a minute. So this guy supposedly produced this circuit. That's supposed to word of mouth. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like word of mouth. Like this like that's that's just anecdotal. Word of mouth is just anecdotal, right? Consensus should be like a poll or something like that. Like like and then that could change tomorrow, right? Maybe people have been convinced by Gupta. Should I change my view on dark matter based on consensus? Like, I don't believe dark matter exists. I just don't. Like, yeah. Yeah, majority opinion doesn't equal consensus. <laughs> we all got stuck in the flat earth dome. <laughs> Anyways, this is supposed to be some weird induction energy thing. Not uh neener. Okay, stored energy in a conduct in an inductor. Like, okay, Lenz's law. We know from Lenz's law that inductance is opposed changes in currents. Yes, we know that. There is an alternative way to look at this opposition that is based on energy. Energy is stored in a magnetic field. It takes time to build up energy and it also takes time to deplete energy. Hence, there is an opposition to the rapid change. In an inductor, the magnetic field is directly proportional to current and to the inductance of the device. It can be shown that the energy stored in an inductor is given by... What? Energy can't be stored in a magnetic field. Wait, can energy be stored in a magnetic field? I don't think so.
I'm doing good, Danny Turner. How you doing? Uh... I'm confused. Can energy be stored in a magnetic field? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. How you doing, Matthew? Um... You can't... It's like it takes so much to induce the charge, like, but... Yeah. Okay, so he got a battery, and he has an inductor here. Wait, no, he has a brass pipe. Half-inch brass pipe. Okay. Ferrite core. Okay, whatever. And then he has a transistor. A PNP transistor. 100 kilo ohm, res okay, and 100 kilo ohm. Well, he has two transistors, an NPN and a PNP transistor and a battery and a brass pipe. As long as the current is on, yeah. Okay, so what does this do? You turn this on, okay, you have the, is that a little, is that a pastor? Is this the resistor here? That, that's the NPN? Pico ferret capacitor. Oh, that's a capacitor. Where's the resistor? I know it's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> Whatever. Oh, I don't care. So okay, so he has a little capacitor. 47 Pico ferret capacitor. DC battery. A brass pipe, okay. Uh, but the brass pipe's not ferrite core. Okay. I think he's saying he can charge an inductor and get a voltage spike when he switches a switch. Is, so I was like, duh. Like, okay. I think that's what he's claiming. It's like, when he said it, it's like, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, look, he drew it out. Okay, uh, a 50 Henry ferrite. Okay, 50 Henry... And okay, a little capacitor and a under kilo ohm resistor battery. So he has this bias there. Okay. Does what this doesn't do anything? What's this do? This just this just turns on. So this uh spam. I think this is going to be Lenz's Law. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. All, he, all he's doing is biasing this, right? Okay, let's look. Okay, so he has the positive here. He has a negative here. Positive here. Negative here. So positive, negative. And then negative, no, not a positive. So negative, positive. So this turns on, it looks like so. So it's switching back and forth at whatever this circuit is. Is that what it's doing? It's switching back and forth at whatever this circuit is. Drop ball down copper pine it will slow. It might be an oscillator. Like this circuit, this circuit will switch this on and off. Let me look. PNP and NPN transistor oscillator. Okay. Uh Circuit classic oscillator. Yeah, let's see, go away. It's been a long time. Images, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an oscillator. Discharge cycle. Oh, yeah, you cook a little. You can look a little speaker up to it to get it to make a noise. Yeah, yeah, it's a little oscillator circuit. Except you can hook a speaker up to it instead of the copper pipe. So that like this circuit hooks a speaker up to it, this and this puts an inductor on it. So I think he's saying he can get it to run a motor faster. Is what he's saying. Like when he like switches out one of the transistors. Like he's going to produce extra power somehow. Okay. So see, he put this switch in here. Okay. I don't know. So he's saying he can switch in and out this switch. Like when the switch is off, nothing's happening. There's no audio either. Yeah. Like there's no audio. So is this, this, he switches this on and he has these little LEDs. Okay. So the little lights blink. Whatever. I know electric motors are efficient. Yeah, he, he thinks he can produce more energy with it when he switches it by bypassing the circuit. But this doesn't do anything when this is switched out. Like, like there's no power here. Like, this doesn't do anything like this. Well, like this circuit here doesn't do anything unless you, if you close it in, what's it do? Like nothing. You got uh, negative going to here, positive coming around to here and positive to here. Negative to here, so that turns that on, which should turn this one on. So you close this in, you turn this on, and it should should create an oscillator. Yeah, capacitor. Well, modern capacitors they can do, they can make good storage devices with modern capacitors. Um, but yeah.
Yeah, look, you just okay. Yeah, the I've had capacitors blow up on me. An oscope. Okay, so that's the oscillator. Yeah. Come on, dude. Okay. I don't see anything. Power in. <laughs> I mean, big capacitors blow up on me too, like power transformers or power transform. Power capacitors. Did I miss something? Like, I don't, I don't see anything here. Oh, uh, that's a shame. Maybe the second one will have something important. Oh, yeah, the second one has a motor hooked up to it. Okay. Uh, uh neater neater okay wow that's why i said like oh if you put more voltage if you increase the voltage it's like you can make an oscillator that creates a voltage doubler by switching it on and off right like i know how to make a voltage doubler with like an oscillator circuit with a capacitor circuit and capacitors or uh transistors capacitors but just because you make the motor spin faster doesn't mean it's doing any more work, right? It's like, if that's all you're doing, it's like, you're not making any more power, dude. Like, if you're just making it spin faster because you put a more voltage on it, it's not doing any more work. It depends on the type of motor it is. Hi, YouTube. Here's another thing I've been working on in Adam's motor. It's just funny, too. Like, he has uh, to get it started by hand. Told me about this, scored me a few parts, and I threw it together. And basically how this motor works... Like, look, it's tough. He has to do get, it by hand. Um, half the rotation for free. Basically, the magnet is attracted to the core. That's free. And then the, ma the coil turns on and pushes the magnet away. Like, he can't that even he get it to do it by itself. Right there, it's free. Yeah, look Plus, at this. Um, because <laughs> it's got a reverse EMF diode. I hooked up a battery here. And guess what? I was getting a slight charge. So if this thing was doing work, then basically I would get a free charge. I had a scope <laughs> on it, uh, ammeter, the whole nine yards. Whether I had it charging or not didn't make any difference. But it's not a self-starter. I have to get a little help. It's so funny. Like, he has to start it by hand. He, he hasn't even made a three-phase motor, dude. Like... He could have put a capacitor in there to give it a kick in the right direction to get it to go, right? Like, a, he could have made a three-phase, like, a motor to give it direction. Like, this doesn't do anything. But the like, idea what's it being doing? That these are pulsed on a certain time. It's not doing anything. There's my sensor. A Hall effect. Switching this transistor. This resistor never gets hot at all. It's in series with the coil. In fact, it might even get a little cold. There's supposed to be some reverse EMF. Zero point energy kind of stuff happening, but I haven't gotten into that yet. But, anyways, just another thing I've been up to over the winter. Okay. Total turn. So he got it to do more turns? What he said. So there's no more power. You got it to do more turns. Yeah. 
Total deterrence. Wow. Good job, dude. And was it even consistent? So he increases the voltage, he gets it to do more turns. Wow, amazing. Hey, Sinandra. He increases the voltage and he gets it to do, he gets it to spin faster. He's stone. He's an analyst. He styles himself to be some like um, expert engineer. Wow. He increased the voltage. Amazing. I could have just created a step up transformer and got it to spin faster. <laughs> I don't see what he did there. Anybody see what he did there? It looked like he just increased the voltage, got it to spin faster. Like, wow. Cool, dude. Or he got the waveform to change. Ooh, amazing. By switching. Ooh. Like, just build a better friggin' rectifier, dude. <laughs> Free energy. <laughs> I don't know what he was trying to do. Not nothing I could see. So I told him I would go over his circuit, but I I don't. See, I looked like an oscillator that he was just switching. He put a switch in, and he hooked a motor up to it. And he didn't show any measurement of current or anything. He just put an oscilloscope on it to show the voltage, to show the waveform. And he didn't put any values. He showed the rate, like the frequency. Like he didn't show anything. Yeah, no torque, no power. So, and just because you make something efficient, like good for you, dude, you made it more efficient. It doesn't mean you like, couldn't like, and you sort of bastardized it anyways. Uh, it's funny. I don't know what to go over now. Like flat earthers aren't doing anything important. Like Witsit sort of has given up on his free schooling Glovers. Maybe the disc bin hadn't been invented yet. Oh, he, he mocked me too. You know, I got, I got banned from the either cosmology group. The one I was like reviewing all their papers and stuff. So they van, yeah, voltage and RPM alone is like nothing. Everybody knows that as a kid, you put a bigger battery on a DC motor, it spins faster. That's just a unregulated motor, right? Like it doesn't mean anything, they burn out. They, their life cycle goes down if you're over voltage but they'll spin faster. Like it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I was, no, so remember I emailed that Robert guy and the one, the analyst that wrote the paper about alpha. And so he posted the, the email I wrote him. And so they banned me for emailing them. <laughs> and the one guy came to the chat the other day when I was doing the ether cosmology review for Shane. And he was saying a bunch of stuff, how it was a liar, 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 whatever. And so they banned me. Like whatever. Just just do your own research. Yeah. Like, okay. Not banned for not agreeing with them is what it was. Ban for not agreeing with them. <laughs> I see. And what's it still doing Trump stuff? So it looks like he gave up on schooling Glovers. I'll, I'm not saying it has anything to do with me, though. But uh, this weekend, I plan on working on that video. Oh, um, tonight, there's going to be a modern day debate. 
Um, but uh, Mark Reed's doing his own after show. So he says, is Trump the chosen one? So his argument is that Ashton or Ashton, Jared Kushner is the chosen one. <laughs> and Trump's going to select him as uh, Jared Kushner as his running mate. And then Trump's going to die. No, I, yeah, I don't think he supports Trump because he's like anti-Israel. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. He's confusing. <laughs> yeah. So I, I um retweeted it. Said I predict that he will not choose Jared as his running mate. Yeah. Witsit is not the sharpest dude in the world. He said that um, when a circle casts a, a sphere, casts a shadow on another sphere, it casts um, S waves. Shadows. <laughs> like he Oh, Mark Reed is um, debating, um, let's see. Tonight, Mark Reed is debating, uh, he's debating with Dusty against Muslim apologist and Hussein. And Hussein has been messaging me on Discord for pointers against his debate with uh, Mark Reed. <laughs> he's been asking me all these questions about naturalism and atheism, so... Shadows are S waves. Yes, Bob. Shadows are S waves. According to Witsit, shadows are S waves. Yeah, I like Mark too. He could be a little pedantic, but yeah, shadows are S waves, according to Witsit. Can't make it up, dude. It's like so bad. Like his, like, Lack of knowledge. He just makes stuff up to sound intelligent. It's just bad. Yeah, S wave shadows and sine wave shadows interchangeably. So weird. Yeah. Well, they don't like they don't like that I go against their narrative, Sinandra. They think I'm lying because I'm not convinced by their argument. So that's just their problem. Marjorie Taylor Green should be his running mate. <laughs> no reckon better. I don't know. There could be a constitutional crisis if he gets convicted on one of these state charges like in Georgia or New York or something like that, and he wins. That would be, I think that would be bad for the country. And I don't want that to happen. I'd rather he lose. Do I think Witsit is lying? No, I don't think Witsit's lying. I do not think Witsit's lying. No, I think he's a true believer. I just think he memorizes stuff. He's very good at memorizing things. And he's very good at selling stuff. Um, so people have like different types of intelligences. And I think he has like um, good like intelligence and like empathy. It's certain like parts of intelligence where he's good at engaging with people and stuff like that. But when it comes to like um, other types of intelligence, I, I don't think so. Like logic and philosophy and stuff like that, definitely not. Um, no, <laughs> but when it comes to like um, sales and engaging with people, individuals and stuff, I think he's very good salesmanship and stuff like that. I think Wits it's very good at um, engaging with an audience. Um, there is no law, state, or federal that stops a convicted felon from holding office of president. Correct. This is this is correct. Um, shifty eyes. The problem is with that. Can 
you remove somebody from state prison and put them in the office. That's the problem. I think they would just release him until he was until he served the presidency. I think they'd have to because it would create a crisis. It probably go to the Supreme Court, where the governor would like, like, what are the charges? Are the charges large enough to put him in prison, like state prison? Or where is it just would it just be parole or uh, probation? You had a, you had a juris doctorate degree, or you have a juris doctorate degree. You okay? Better. <laughs> I went to law school for two years, but I I didn't finish so because I only went two years. I was in high school, so you had to go four. So I don't have a juris doctorate degree, but it's a good question, right? Like, can they remove him from jail? It would be a problem. And if he won, it, that's a problem. They, they can't, like, stop him from assuming the office of president. Right? <laughs> it's a problem. Oh, good. I don't blame you. Like, I didn't know if I ever wanted to practice law. If I did, I probably would have been a defense attorney. Um, I might, or a patent lawyer. But, um, maybe. But I took the first year of law school exam in California because you had to, and to, to go to a non-ABA school in California. That was fun. I passed. <laughs> Slimy defense attorney. Defense attorneys are the people that protect us from the government. Like, they're the heroes. I think so. Whatever. They're the true heroes. They're the bulwark against our liberties. Like, that's all we got. We got defense attorneys and a piece of paper that protect our rights. That's it. Like, there's nothing else. Most of the people you know, what? Yeah, I I uh, hooked up again with a couple of my study partners in law school. They're both lawyers. Went to the same school I did. Like, they both passed the bar, like, the first time. And I was doing better, anyways. But, pretty cool. They seem to like it. Those two do, anyways. But they were sharp. Like, compared to the rest of the students, anyways. <laughs> Which it brings up hostile witness. He ignores the definition and context in the law and is instead commits an appeal to authority fallacy. Either Neil deGrasse, Fried Kircher, or Einstein gravity. Yes, he does. It's an appeal to authority fallacy. And I bring that up in my debates. That it is an appeal to authority fallacy. And I mention it all the time. He doesn't care. He calls out hostile witness. It's not. It's an appeal to authority fallacy. Your mom's a 35-year criminal defense appellate attorney. Cool. Um, why did I drop law school? Life happened. So I, I was changing schools. I moved to a state so I could go to an ABA school because um, I wanted to go to an ABA school so I'd have more options. And... Um, I had problems getting my money. I had a bunch of money saved up and I couldn't get access to all my savings and I ended up needed to go work and I got a better job anyways that made more money than a lawyer would make. So I ended up doing that and traveling though, but whatever. State law, no federal party, no president in the U.S. on whether a president can be elected if in prison. Oh, no, that's not true. Um, the president of the United States can be elected president um, in prison. There's nothing to bar him from being a president. 
But why would anyone vote for a convicted felon? Because they, they love Trump. There's nothing barring somebody in prison from being elected president. There's There might be something with like what Colorado's doing. Think Trump will be convicted on the state level and overturn at federal level. Could be. There could be some issues with um, prosecutorial misconduct with some of the stuff. I know people don't want to hear that, but uh, I don't know. It looks sort of weird. Like, why do they go after him just now? You know, he has he's had these issues forever. Oh, same thing. AC poisons well with his opening arguments all the time. He didn't do that with me, though. Uh, fortunately. Oh, okay. So that's what you said. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, he could be president. He's just... Um, yeah, the U.S. Constitution governs that, that he can run. Even if convicted as a felon. There's nothing... The only thing required to be president of the United States is... 35 years of age or older and a national born citizen. That's it. Yeah. It's completely unprecedented and our legal system works mainly on case precedent. Statutory interpretation is secondary. We are common law system. Yep. Trump will likely win. The polls are shifting back towards Biden. Maybe. So we'll see what happens. It's voting is stupid, I think. The U.S. election is a joke that sadly affects your life. Does it? How much? Really, in the end. Does it affect your life emotionally because people talk about it a lot? But that Wits Quit is schooling. Now that Wits Quit is schooling, Glover's is news to me, but okay, he did challenge MC2, but ran from that and spout Chief's excuses on why he won't debate him and lie about it. Yep. Hopefully he quit it. Maybe he gave up. <laughs> It'd be sort of funny. You think Biden will win, but you don't support either. I don't support either either. Trump will not win. He does not have the numbers. I I beg to differ. Um, not according to the polls. The polls are against um, Biden. Especially the state polls. So if you just go by Electoral College. Now, they are, they are going back towards... Um, Biden. So that's and just and this doesn't mean I'm tit picking a side, people. Oh, the polls haven't been wildly wrong. No. The polls have been pretty accurate within a couple points. Trump is not the richest man. Whatever. What about the 14th Amendment? 14th Amendment doesn't cover Trump. Anyways, um, Trump is up 2% in a five-way race. Uh, state houses don't matter for that. There's no jury rigging or um, jury mandarine for presidential elections. So jury mandarine only matters for state elections. So doesn't really play any role. Anyways, the five way race trumps up two points, but it's the state races that really matters. But it's only two points. It was like up like five points. But if you look, this time four years ago, Biden was up six points. 
So, and Biden won when he was up six points four years ago. So it's a 7.9 point swing from four years ago. So he's from plus six to uh, plus 1.9. Voter ID and such. In the states that matter, where? In, in what states that matter has that been happening in? Like, yeah. I think it doesn't matter. I think in the end, it's going to be who the people want um, in the end. In general. We, we get who we vote for in general. I might only do like this like a weekly show now with the reschooling flat earthers unless they start like producing more content. Like they, they sort of acquired it down a lot, which is sort of cool, I think. I, there's not really much to go over. What a dub, dumb statement, whatever. Whatever. I do think people vote who they want, but whatever. Anyways, that's it for my show today, I think. Uh, there's really not much to go over this week. With uh, um, Maybe I'll do some debate reviews and stuff like that. You didn't want to leave Europe? Where'd you go, Sinandra? Oh, yeah. Well, the popular election doesn't always determine who wins. It's uh, Electoral College. So in that regard, people get who they want. That's what I mean. only happened like three times four times you stayed in england england's in europe is the ether cosmology done i think so bob i mean we can go over some more of it maybe if you want to um i'm not sure what else to go over yeah eu <laughs> Like, they don't produce much content. Electric Universe? Oh, yeah, we could maybe go over the Electric Universe. Oh, EU Electric Universe. I see what you did there. Electoral Universe. America would be better off without it. Until, like, Trump. What if Trump wins, like, without the Electoral College and Biden would have won with it? <laughs> Then <laughs> people would have been upset. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching today. Um, I just want to show you the lovely um, the telephone booth podcast guys. They're not. They're the bottom of the food chain when it comes to flat earthers. So uh, they pretend like they're not. Um, and so be sure to check out the debate tonight on Modern Day Debate and go check out Mark Reed's after show tonight. Um, if Trump wins, Canada's building a wall. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'll be sure to be scheduling some other content. I'll see what I can do for Flat Earth content. I know that's like our po most popular stuff, but I'll probably do it later in the day when we don't have debate stuff going on. And I will be scheduling a debate for um, May 8th on If Satan Exists with Dustin Nemo. So that should be fun. So I, because it, it will be fun. It won't be pedantic. Like it will be entertaining. I plan for it to be entertaining. I don't plan on taking a debate with Dustin Nemo seriously at all. Like just believe that it will be entertaining. I think I will try to make it entertaining. And, but it'll be on Jaronism. So we'll see how that format goes. Uh, bye bye. And with that, I'll talk to y'all later. And, um, See you all next time.